It's difficult to judge morally on euthanasia cases without looking at a particular case. This is because the weighing up of the factors, even in moral views that hold a very strong sanctity of life like natural law, require some context. So with natural law theory, we need a context in order to judge whether there is a double effect, whether there is a good intention, for example, which is overriding the bad consequence that somebody might die. And in December, there was a ruling on uh, euthanasia with the case of Paul Briggs, who was a police motorcyclist who had a terrible accident and had been in a coma for some months. And his wife requested a judge at the Court of Protection in the UK to have a ruling about whether his life support could be turned off. And this is, of course, a form of passive euthanasia where treatment is withdrawn. Now, some um, ethical writers, such as um, James Rachels, for example, would argue there is no difference between an act and an omission, a positive action and a failure to act. And we could also say that in terms of consequences, there is no difference between actively killing somebody and withdrawing treatment or turning off a life support machine. And in this particular case, the judge, it seems, took a, a view of putting himself in the situation of Paul Briggs. And his wife said, interestingly, the judge was able to put himself in Paul's situation. And for that, we will forever be grateful. And from that point of view, of course, ethical theories may come to the same decision, whether you're a utilitarian or a natural law theorist. Because if you put yourself in someone's situation and your in intention is to do good, in other words, to alleviate suffering in this case, then the result, in this case, turning off the life support machine, could well be the same. And that was the decision that the judge came to. He decided, in the case of Paul Briggs in December, that it was morally completely acceptable to withdraw treatment and hence to allow him to die 